Okay, so we're down at the shop today. Uh, this should be a great video. Uh, if you have not seen the last video, I'll put a link up, up in the corner there uh, about the issues that I had. I had a tire blowout on the camper and could, you know tore the whole J panel side off of both sides. Had one blowout on the way down to Windrock, one blowout on the way back. And it's been months trying to find parts. Uh, one, I want to give a shout out to James. Uh, one of my uh, viewers uh, had sent me a link to a dealer uh, that, uh, to be quite honest, it's probably the best customer experience I've ever had. Uh, thanks to Jen there, uh, she took care of me. And this arrived yesterday via freight. Brand new parts for the RV, hassle-free. Again, thanks so much, James, for giving me the contact info. And uh, thanks, Jen, for getting this out to me really quick. Um, anyway, stay tuned. We're going to try to get this uncrated and uh, see what we got in the box. Okay, so here's everything crated up. Um, got some new fenders. These look like they match. And this does look like the correct material. As you can see, excellent job. This crating is fairly expensive, um, but they did an excellent job. This looks like it arrived with not even a scratch on it. So let me get this out of the box. Um, just to note, if you saw how I took that crate off, uh, they had a small piece down at the bottom. I took it off first. And then just kind of peeled the rest. It may save you some time. Thinking about it last night, I was a little worried about how hard it was to get it uncrated. Uh, but it was really easy, as you can see. Anyway, let's get these uh, support braces out. This is actually holding material from bouncing around or moving inside of the crate. Um, and uh, we'll get the fenders off and make sure everything matches up. Um, one side that I have to do on the camper, I know I'm going to have to cut the fender because it's on the slide outside. Uh, but we'll, we'll go over that when we get out to the camper. Alright, so step one of this stuff, basically taking it out. This is what it looks like. Um, it's JPL. This does match my form. And uh, the way you cut it is you basically lay it out. You want to get a really sharp line. Uh, you can either scribe it. In my case, I'm out in the sun and this reflects. Uh, so I opted just to put a pencil mark, something really fine and thin. Um, and I used a kind of the all purpose cutter. That's I think this one's made by Spider. And basically, I just scored a line in the material and then just kept successfully making deeper cuts. When I got really close, I went ahead and used this to actually cut through the corner. And as you can see here, if you need to watch your angle, but I basically tip this up and cut through this corner straight with this. Um, this particular cut wasn't a super critical cut because most of this I'm going to end up trimming off because the fender uh, is out on that location. But just be mindful of your cuts. So on this on this piece, um, this most of this is going to be fender. So I'm not real super worried about this being super straight or what have you. Um, but I'm using the good edge on the edge that I'm overlapping. So this piece is going to go on the camper. And this back side over here is going to be the overlapping piece that you can still see. Uh, so I'm going to use the really straight uh, factory cut edge. Uh, so we're going to go around to the, to the camper. I'm going to remove a bunch of the screws. Um, I may need to get some replacement screws. I don't know. Um, I'm going to get those screws out and then we'll be able to get this piece up in there and get it screwed in. And then we'll need to cut sections of this out uh, to match the fender. Okay, so now we're just going to pull these out. These are just square head screws. We got screws here. We got a little bit of uh, work we need to do there that's kind of poking out. Uh, we're going to ba basically tap in all these staples again. Uh, we got some screws here. Uh, and there's actually a screw in this, which I can still get to. I'll remove it. What we'll do is we'll get the panel in there, and then we'll see where we need to cut. 
and uh, see if we need to do any additional bracing to keep these panels from moving around too much. I don't want to go too crazy in case I do have another blowout. Um, I'd much rather it just rip this bottom section off than damage any of this or any of the uh, infrastructure. Because uh, in reality, uh, this was fairly expensive, uh, mainly to ship because they're so oblong. But it's a lot cheaper than having to actually replace panels on the side of the trailer. Um, so let me get all these removed and we'll start fitting up the new piece. Okay, so there's a couple of different screw tops. Uh, if you noticed on the metal tab side, they have self-threaders. Uh, back here, they have just standard uh, machine screws. Um, just be mindful of that when you pull them out as to which screw type of screw they are. Okay, so we got all the screws out. I'm going to use a little body hammer set to actually kind of tap this back in. You won't be able to see this anyway. Uh, but I don't want this little, it's kind of ripped the aluminum a little bit and tore it out and I want it to be flat. Now that's nice and flat and I uh, won't have any problems putting that piece on. Okay, so we've kind of got step one done. Uh, you can see this piece is a little newer. It's not exactly the same, but it's mainly because this has been out in the weather. Um, but as far as fit and finish, uh, fits up nice. Um, I need to probably put a little bend in that there to hold that together. Or I may put a screw down here and actually attach those. Uh, but it fits real nice up in here. So now we've actually got a cut out for the fender and uh, this is what's left of the old fender. So we'll blend that up and get that mounted on. Okay, so now we've got our hole. I may need to cut this out a little bigger. I don't think so. It looks about right to me. Um, I have to put the new piece on. Um, so this is the old one. This is the new one. You can tell they're a little bit darker color. This one's kind of starting to get a little brittle. But I got the uh, I got the new one on. Got it cut. We got this piece cut out. So it's now we just got to trim up. Modify this back piece here just a little bit to get it to fit on the old one. They actually cut it and rolled it up. Uh, I don't think I'm going to do that. I think I'm actually just going to modify this. That way, it will provide a little bit more rigidity or make this a little bit more rigid by not cutting this out. This crease is what keeps the strength, and I want to retain that. I'd rather this get torn off and then this completely get blasted away just because too much of this is cut out. Okay, so this side's done other than I need a couple extra screws. This, uh, these fender pieces actually have more screw holes than what the stock ones did. So I'm short quite a few screws. Uh, I'll go grab some of those at Lowe's. I'll, 
I'll probably have to buy, I know I can get this style, but I'll have to put a little bit of paint or something over the top of the match. I'll probably just do the black. Um, but this is done, so we cut this here. Uh, it's about as good as it was before. Um, and this matches this. There's a little bit of color difference, but not enough to really matter. The only other thing I had to do is I had to make a little aluminum brace to come out and push this ahead. This was actually kind of kind of tilt up underneath. It didn't do as bad here. Um, but got that done. The only thing I'll, uh, I'll mention, I haven't put one in and I don't know that I'll replace it. But they actually had a cut off screw here. So I'm assuming they probably pushed the slide out a little ways and actually trimmed the screw off. That way you don't end up, when the slide goes back, the screw would actually hit this piece. But um, I've just avoided that completely and put this over here. That way it's out of the way of everything. Uh, but overall, real happy with it. It looks as good as it did when I bought it and uh, got this side replaced. Um, so for those of you that have had this kind of tire damage, I've got one more side to do. Um, total cost on this, uh, you're looking at probably the majority of the cost is going to be shipping. Um, it was under $1,000 for the parts that I needed, some extra parts. I did buy a whole extra piece just in case this ever happens again. Uh, but the majority, over 50% of the cost is just in the shipping. Uh, and that's understandable because it, you know, I have to pack it up in that long crate. Uh, it's kind of just the nature of uh, big RV parts or any parts for that matter. If they're really big to ship, uh, it costs a lot more money to actually ship them and to, to package them, especially when they're fra as fragile as these aluminum panels. Uh, so, in closing, again, thanks to everybody that uh, helped out with this. Um, this got done after I got the right contact. Uh, this happened very quickly, like about a week. I think it was six days from the time I ordered it till the time I got it. Um, and now this is like maybe day number eight. So uh, not bad at all. It's kind of what I expected when it happened. Um, but I was unable to find anybody uh, until I kind of reached out on YouTube. And uh, luckily somebody knew somebody. So thanks to everybody. And I hope this helps some folks out. Uh, if you have any questions, be sure to drop comments. Uh, if you've got a better way of doing this, uh, please let me know. Um, anyway, we'll see you on the next one. And uh, be sure to like and subscribe. Share if you know somebody that this would be useful for if they've got a camper. And uh, I'm going to go over and do the other side. Thanks again. We'll see you on the next one.